Very good day to you people. My name is Mohitan guys. Today I'm going to show you for the third time. Yes, for the third time, the typewriter effect. Uh, I'll start explaining and teaching a little later. Let me first show you a published preview, guys. I was so intrigued, so uh, you know, I found it so interesting. So this is the third variation when it comes to the typewriter text effect. So here goes Control Enter on the keyboard, guys, to test the movie. Pay a lot of attention when we have the carriage return or the enter and when it actually finishes typing. Pay attention to the sounds guys. Cool. So guys this typewriter uh, text effect uses a lot of sound effects as well and if you actually have a look at the you know inside the library we have this type rough typewriter font which is which has been embedded I have this typewriter keystroke uh, which is actually a, a wave sound let me play it for you now this is the line break every time it's also called the carriage return every time there's a line break guys this is the sound that you hear right and every time you know if you noticed when the typing actually finished there was that paper being pulled out sound so that was the sound okay so these three sounds have been used inside the action script and uh, to make it very realistic guys the effect that you get is actually very realistic but then guys this tutorial isn't very basic um, keeping in mind that uh, we have used the sound I've used the sound class and uh, <coughs> I've used the sound class a lot so you need to understand uh, the sound transform class you need to understand uh, how you actually play the sounds how you actually decrease the volume uh, you need to understand how you actually loop the sounds twice so unless and until you are very clear with the sound class uh, you know this tutorial maybe a, a little uh, a little too advanced for you little just a little bit not much okay in fact also so you have already seen what is inside the library the rough typewriter is actually the font that has been embedded so I'm also assuming guys that you know how to embed fonts alright so a WAV file has been used and mp3 files have been used alright and guys uh, if I go to the properties out here mm, let me show you what else we have guys we have a stage which I have kept black okay initially it was white I've changed the color to black and then I've dropped this text field which is almost uh, the same size as the, the stage just a little shorter from all the four sides to apply that nice margin okay the font which has been embedded I went to the you know I clicked on the embed button and I said character range is all the font that I've used is rough underscore typewriter now this font may not be available with you but it's actually free to download uh, you can just google it out you can download you can download any other typewriter kind of a font all right or you can check in your own uh, font library you may have a font which resembles a typewriter cool the size that i've kept is 22 the color that, that i've kept is kind of green okay i made sure it's not selectable i've kept the alignment to a left i've kept the left and right margins to 10 each all right the behavior has been set to multi-line and the anti alias is set for readability okay guys it's extremely important that you make the text field by pressing this uh, you know by hitting the text tool but make sure that you're using classic and dynamic only once you do that guys you are then able to give an instance name which I've kept at my text now this my text instance name is going to be used in the uh, action script guys you just have two layers on the timeline the first has been called as3 the second layer has been called text field okay which actually holds the text field okay let's dive inside the actions panel and show it to you cool now action script is usually for tough nuts <laughs> right so let's see how tough you are right let me expand the area there you go ah oh, it's kind of big hmm right so guys the, these are few classes uh, that have been imported which get auto imported when you actually write the script guys okay 
Now, notice out here line number 4, I've used the sound transform class. Now, the sound transform class is actually used to manipulate the sound and here I've kept the volume at 0.5. This, the, the only parameters that I've used inside the sound transform class, let me put a semicolon out here, is the volume and that I've set at 0.5. There is a place uh, in the script where I actually use the sound transform class. We'll come to that. Okay. Now, guys, I've created three variables, my K, K, S, K for keystroke my cg cg for uh, carriage return and my end my end for when you actually terminate the program okay and l let me show you what ks cg and end are guys if you actually have a look in the library out here uh the as linkage of the typewriter keystroke sound has been done with the ks the typewriter line break has been done with the cg and the paper rollout has been done with the end now how do you do the as linkage guys once you are actually done with importing these sounds and guys how do you actually import the sounds inside the library all you need to do is you need to say file you need to say import you need to say import to the library even if you say import to stage it will be imported only to the library guys okay so once the the sounds are inside the library guys they are available for usage okay once they are inside out here you will not see the AS linkage, you will not see the KSCGN. You will have to manually do that. I will tell you how you actually do that. You just right click on the sound, you go to the properties out here. Uh, guys, you can actually change the compression, okay? You can change the compression to the way you want. Uh, you know, you can decrease, you can, inc you know, make the quality a little better if you want. I've done it for, uh, let me try raw out here. If I, let's, let's try raw and um, let's not say convert stereo to mono let's go with 44k at z that'll give you a much better sound okay running at 1408 kpbs and let me say okay that'll actually improve the quality of the sound but guys i was talking about the yes linkage so a right click out here so go to properties and uh, you can change the compression that we have just done so far you need to click on the action script tab guys it may be a little different when using uh, cs5 cs4 but i'm using cs5.5 you need to check this box on it which says export for action script then you need to give a class name and i've given it as ks and then you need to say okay once you say okay you'll get a warning which you need to ignore you need to say okay and then the as yes linkage is actually complete guys all right that's the way you do the as yes linkage Similarly, you need to right click for the second sound. You need to go to properties. You need to go to the action script tab. You need to give a class name and say OK. Right, but out here, guys, have a look. Um, I have set the compression from uh, the default to MP3. I made sure that it was not converted to mono. I made sure that the bitrate was set to 128. And it was uh, by default 64. It was by default set to default. Okay, this was by default set to fast. I set it to medium i'm improving the sound quality guys and then i said okay you know and for the third sound i did the same thing so i went to properties i made sure that it was sent to mp3 uh, in on you know on your system the default may be default but you need to set it to mp3 to improve the voice uh, you know the sound quality it will increase the file size guys but still okay make sure that it's not converting it uh, your sound to a mono i'm letting it act stereo okay the quality let me set it to medium all right and that's the compression ratio. Go to the action script tab. Make sure action, you know, export for action script button is checked on. I gave a class name, guys, and uh, said, okay, ignore the warning. So this is how you actually do the AS linkage, guys. The KSCG and end. These are the AS linkages that I've used out here. So in the variable, which I've declared as my KS, I've fed the sound, uh, you know, the keystroke sound. Here I've fed the carriage return sound. And here I've uh, fed the paper rollout sound okay we're gonna use these three sound inside the action script guys okay then i've created a variable i declared a variable i made it equal to zero i i skipped the type which is okay you can actually do that sometimes <sighs> all right <clears throat> and here i've created a variable my string which in which i've actually put my own string guys you should feel free to put your own string as per your custom requirement but guys just do remember when you encounter this uh, when flash encounters um, backslash n it actually means a carriage return a double black uh, you know backslash n means double carriage return all right cool and um, so it actually does not consider it a character it actually considers it as a carriage return a hitting as good as hitting the enter sign we have three enters three carriage returns out here okay 
so it actually reads it as carriage return. That's why I've kept uh, three carriage returns out here, one out here, uh, one out here, and uh, two out here. All right, guys. Now in line number thirteen, I've created a, a, t a timer. Okay, I'm using the timer class, guys. I've instantiated a timer. I'm making sure that the timer fires after every one hundred milliseconds, and it fires as much as the length of the string as many characters are there in the string okay after which the timer will stop cool and guys I've added an event listener to the timer my timer and every time the timer is run it is executing a function called timer handler guys whenever you create a timer it's mandatory that you start the timer otherwise timer handler function will not execute it's mandatory to use the dot start method okay the start method rather let's see what the function timer handler does okay every time after 100 and uh, after 100 uh, milliseconds the timer is run you know it's playing a sound uh, my case now my case if you remember guys from line number uh, five is actually hosting the keystroke sound so every after every hundred uh, milliseconds it's playing the keystroke sound okay it's also checking uh, now guys the dot char at char at means character at i you see what is happening in my string which is this long string guys we are using the char at method uh, character at i so the first time the, the timer fires the i is actually zero so the character at zero is actually the letter m the character at one is actually the letter o then the character at 2 is the H, so on and so forth. So this I is going to be incremented at the end of, uh, you know, the function out here. So it checks if the character at I is actually a space. Okay. If it is, then it's going to play the carriage return sound. But it will start the carriage return sound a little late after 100 milliseconds. Okay. It will play it just once and play it in accordance with the variable my volume. If you remember, guys, my volume is actually responsible for dropping the sound in intensity by 50%. Guys, again, you should understand the sound class. Otherwise, whatever I'm saying is actually, you know, uh, being fed into one of the ears and it's going out straight from the other one. So, <laughs> you may be deaf to whatever I'm saying if you don't know the sound class, guys. So, it, it may be just too much. Uh, but for guys who actually understand the sound class, guys, when you use the play method, guys, the first parameter is actually the starting point. It will start after um, 100 milliseconds. There's a reason for that. We'll play just once and play at 50% the intensity. Okay. But if the character at I, now I is 0 initially, is a carriage return. You know, a backslash n is a carriage return. So if it, it encounters a carriage return, it will play the carriage return sound, but it will play at full intensity, not at 50% like here. It will start from the very beginning, not after 100 milliseconds out as it was the case out here. All right. So I wanted the space bar to sound a little different from the carriage return. That was the reason I used these two variations, guys. Okay. I've used the same sound. But uh, one of the sounds is starting after 100 uh, milliseconds. The other sound is starting from the very beginning. One of the sounds is at 50% because the sound transform class. Okay, the other one is at 100% uh, intensity. So just to make the two keystrokes uh, sound a little different, I use this variation out here in line number 2021. Okay, then guys, if you remember, my text is the big text field that is lying on the the stage okay i'm using the append text method to append the characters to it and the string that i want to append is uh, the character at i so the character at i is sometimes zero sometimes one sometimes two sometimes three depending on um, the cycle in which the timer is you guys remember the i is being incremented uh, towards the end out here okay and in line number 24, we are checking that if i is actually equal to my string dot length. So basically, when all the characters have been, uh, you know, eaten up, have been uh, encountered, it's all over. And if things are all over, you need to play my end uh, sound. And my end sound is nothing but the paper rollout sound. So you need to pull out the paper like so. Hear it. Okay. 
but uh, I'm making it play twice uh, through the second parameter uh, guys see guys uh, I do understand this tutorial because I've used a lot of a lot of uh, the sound class sound class is actually uh, a little complex for most guys and uh, this tutorial may, may not be very basic so <coughs> if it actually comes as very complex you can see my other tutorial where I've just not used the sound class at all okay but uh, or else you can just uh, rather ignore the meaning the deep meaning that lies into the action script just just copy it uh, word to word letter to letter and you'll get the effect that uh, you actually want so before I actually terminate the tutorial guys I would want to show you the uh, end product once again so here goes control and down the keyboard guys wonderful great so guys uh, I hope you like this tutorial and um, I hope to see you very soon once again you have a very good day guys bye bye peace